In this short video presentation, we will be using the matrix adjoint method to find the inverse of a matrix. In the next presentation we will be looking into systems of linear equations with practical applications. In the second lecture, Fourier series and its applications and examples are presented. If, A is a square matrix, and if a matrix B of the same size can be found such that, the matrix multiplication A into B is equal to B into A equals I where I is the identity matrix having the same size as A. In such a case, A is said to be, invertible and, the matrix B is called the inverse of A, and is represented as A, inverse. Note that, a non-square matrix is not invertible, even if not all the square matrices are invertible. The inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix is obtained by having a cofactor matrix derived from A such that the diagonal entries are swapped and the sign of the cross diagonal elements reversed. Each element of this matrix is divided by the determinant of matrix A, provided that the determinant is not zero. However, using the method of least squares, pseudo inverse can be found for the case if determinant is zero and have numerous applications in signal processing, controls and communications such as, data detection in multi-antenna systems, and dealing with multiple UAV communications and controls. An example of 2 by 2 matrix M is shown. We have to find the inverse of M. The determinant is equal to 3 1 minus 1, 2 which is equal to minus 1. The cofactor matrix and finally the inverse matrix is as shown. As shown in the previous slide, to check the result, the product of M and its inverse should be an identity matrix. We will be only considering the adjoint method, to find the inverse of higher order matrices, the steps are, 1, find determinant, 2, find the minor and cofactor matrices, 3, find the adjoint and, 4, find the inverse. The second method based on elementary row operations, or the Gauss-Jordan elimination method will be discussed in the course Linear Algebra. Given a square matrix A, the minor of entry corresponding to the ith row and jth column is represented by M, I, J, and is defined to be the determinant of the submatrix, that remains after the ith row and jth column are deleted from A. For example the M11, Entry of the minor matrix is obtained by deleting the first row and first column. The remaining entries constitute the submatrix, the determinant of which is the value of M11. For M21, the second row and first column is deleted, the remaining entries constitute the submatrix, and the determinant of which is the value of M21. An example to obtain the minor matrix of a given 3 by 3 matrix A is shown in a stepwise manner. For the minor matrix entry, M11, entry of the minor matrix is obtained by deleting the first row and first column of the 3 by 3 matrix, the determinant of the remaining submatrix is obtained, which is 16. For M12, the first row and second column is deleted, the remaining entries constitute the submatrix, and the determinant of M12 is 10. For M13, the first row and third column is deleted, the remaining entries constitute the submatrix, and the determinant of M13 is 3. The determinants for M21, M22, M23, are shown as well as the corresponding to the rest of minor elements. Similarly, the minors for the third row are shown. Finally, the matrix of minor is formed. Given that A is a square matrix, with I row and J column as shown in the previous slide, the cofactor matrix is the minor matrix with the sign of each entry C, I, J, wick is obtained by minus 1 raised to the power of, I plus J. The sign will be positive 1 if the sum of i and j is even, otherwise minus 1. Each element of the cofactor matrix is, thus, the minor element multiplied with 1 or minus 1 depending upon the row and column numbers. Here, is another example of 3 by 3 matrix. Having i and j as the row and column number respectively, the minors m, i, j, are obtained as previously, from the submatrices, 
and then a cofactor matrix, is formed using the sign obtained, whether the sum of i and j is, even, that is, 1, or odd, which is, minus 1. As mentioned earlier, to find the inverse of higher order matrices, the steps are, 1, find determinant, 2, find the minor and cofactor matrices, 3, find the adjoint and, 4, find the inverse. In the previous slide, the first two steps were applied to find the minor and cofactor matrices entries. The third step is to find the adjoint, which is the transpose of the cofactor matrix, and as shown. The final step is to divide each entry of the adjoint matrix by the determinant of matrix A. This is the inverse of A. Note that the multiplication of A with its inverse should result into an identity matrix. Here, are some basic and important properties of the inverse of a matrix. Taking the inverse of the inverse matrix, results in the same matrix. If K is some constant, raising A to power K and then taking the inverse, is the same when taking the inverse first and raising to power k. Multiplying a matrix A, by a constant C is the same, as taking the inverse and, dividing each element by C. Similarly, the last two properties are very important with applications in the analysis of algorithms for signal processing, communication and control systems. The purpose of the channel is education for all, with the objectives to study less but smart, and especially in this tough time of pandemic COVID-19. The course pathways include subjects of communication systems, DSP, control systems, AI, and IT. If these courses are of interest to you, please subscribe to the channel for timely notifications and share with your colleagues friends and class fellows so everyone have access to free education.